and welcome to Serena Speaks and in this video I'm going to be covering what particulars need to go on a prescription to make it valid and therefore make it legal. Now this video is aimed for prescribers and for also anyone who's undergoing a prescribing course. Now the reason for this video is as a pharmacist and I'm sure other pharmacists will be able to empathize with this story there have been situations where a patient has presented me with a prescription and actually there's something that's missing on there which renders it invalid and therefore not legal to then process. I've usually found this for prescriptions which have been handwritten say for example from hospital or with private prescriptions so I think it's really important to highlight exactly what particulars need to go onto a prescription so that it is legal and valid because as you can imagine it becomes a very awkward encounter explaining to the patient why you can't process their prescription the patient then has to spend time going back to the prescriber to then make those get the, that prescription amended. That takes up the prescriber's time, it takes up the patient's time, it's an awkward encounter within the pharmacy. It's, it's a whole big situation which, if it can be avoided, would make life simpler and easier for everybody. So I've tried to highlight some of the key particulars that need to be on a prescription. I do highly recommend that whilst watching this video, you do also refer to the BNF as well for some additional pointers in there too. Now, the templates that I've used for this video are FP10s and I cover an FP10 with general prescription only medication on there, but also an FP10 with a controlled drug medicine on there as well. Now, bear in mind that these particulars do translate to other types of prescriptions too. It's not just for FP10s. So it can be translated to, for example, WP10s in Wales, GP10s in Scotland, um, HS21 prescriptions in Northern Ireland. Um, um, so just to repeat it, it, just because I've written these on FP10 templates doesn't necessarily mean that these rules are just for FP10s. It can be translated into other types of prescriptions. Just bear in mind, if you are looking and using other types of prescriptions, there may be additional requirements. Again, please do refer to the BNF if you are looking at that. So I hope that this video you do find useful and it, that it does show you what particulars need to be written on a general prescription, but also those added itty bitty bits that need to be on a controlled drug prescription too. So enjoy. Here we have a prescription for Mr. Pat Tato. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll be familiar with Mr. Pat Tato. And we have a prescription for levothyroxine and amlodipine. So let's go through some of the particulars that are on this prescription, starting off with name, address, age slash date of birth. Now it's worth noting that for the age of children under 12 years old and for adults over 60 years old, that age must be presented in the age box. For a child under five years old, their age must be presented in months and years. For example, three years and six months old. Now let's take a look at levothyroxine 50 microgram tablets. We can see that micrograms is written in full and not in its abbreviated form MCG. This is because MCG could easily get mistaken for MG, which is milligrams. So it's important to have the word micrograms written out in full. The directions on here are written as 1OD. This is a Latin abbreviation, which can be used. However, it is preferable to have directions in English without abbreviations. If we look at amlodipine five milligram tablets, that's written fine. If it did have, for example, 5.0 milligrams, mm, that wouldn't be preferable. We want to try and avoid any unnecessary use of decimal points. For example, for quantities that are less than one gram, we wouldn't write it as 0 0.5 grams. It would be more pre preferred to write it as 500 milligrams instead. So try to avoid any unnecessary use of decimal points. We also need the signature of the prescriber as well as the date written on the prescription. Now, as you can see from the date written on here, this is the date that this video was recorded. We also need the particulars of the prescriber and the address of the prescriber. Here we have an FP10 prescription with a control drug on it. 
and it's for Mrs. Joe King. As you can imagine, I had a lot of fun coming up with the names for these prescriptions. Now let's look at the particulars that are on here. Starting off with the name, address, age, slash date of birth. Now, the requirements for this are the same for requirements of an FB10 that we looked at earlier. So if it's for an individual that's under the age of 12 or over the age of 60, then the age must be stipulated. If it's for a child under five years old, then the years and months of the age of the child needs to be written. For example, three years and six months old. Now let's take a note of the number of days supply, in this case 30. Now in general for control drugs, for schedule 2, 3 and 4 control drugs, it's recommended that the quantity prescribed does not exceed 30 days. Bear in mind this is not a legal requirement, however prescribers may be asked to justify their reasoning and rationale if they were to prescribe more than 30 days worth of control drug medication. There could be a genuine reason and genuine circumstances, but prescribers should bear in mind that a pharmacist, for example, may contact the prescriber to find out that reasoning and rationale behind prescribing more than 30 days worth of treatment. Now, look, if we look at the medicine itself, we've got oxycodone 10 milligram tablets. So we need to know the name of the medicine. We need to know the strength, so 10 milligrams. We need to know the form, so tablets. Quantity. Quantity must be written in words and figures. If this was a liquid, then the total volume in millilitres would need to be written in words and figures. As in this case, the quantity is written in numbers of tablets, that's why we need to have 60 written as in a number format and 60 written in words as well. It's important that both of these appear on the prescription. We also need to know the dose as well. So take one tablet twice a day is absolutely fine. If, for example, take one as directed was written, that would be fine as well. However, if it was just written as directed, this would not be okay. And therefore, this would render this prescription not legal. So just to repeat, take one as directed, that is fine. But if it's just as directed or take as directed, this would not be suitable. Again, we need the signature of the prescriber. We need the date as well, because for controlled drug prescriptions, they are only valid for 28 days. So it's very important that the date of the prescription is written as well. And we need the particulars of the prescriber and the address of the prescriber. So I hope you found that video useful and now you feel comfortable with what particulars need to be written on a prescription, whether that be legal or just very, very highly, highly recommended. So if you did enjoy this video, why not give it a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe, do also visit my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, thank you for your time and happy watchings.